leaves. I have a whole lot of them in my backyard, literally an endless supply. In today's video, we're going to go through all the ins and outs of leaves, literally all the ins and outs, everything you need to know as a gardener in regards to the benefits of leaves, the negatives of weeds. Is jug alone really, truly an issue? Is oak tree leaves really, truly an issue? Do leaves steal nitrogen from your soil? Literally everything. We're going to go through it all. And if you want to know who this random redhead on the internet is spouting stuff at you, well, my name's Ashley and I have a bachelor's of science in soil science and I like to take said science and apply it to plants. Now, in this case, I am particularly passionate because we're talking about plants and soil interface, the LFH layer, which shockingly enough is like a whole beast unto itself. It acts completely different than basically the rest of the soil profile. Number one is, yes, these are micro magnets and not just micro magnets, but even macro fauna insect magnets as well. These are like a five-star Michelin restaurant when it comes to worms and what they like. Combine that with the fact that a lot of fungus enjoys leaves and consuming them or utilizing them in their high pay. And you have a potential kickoff into a very active compost, a very active leaf layer, layer on the soil of the surface, and or disease and problems. So like anything organic or beneficial, if it benefits something, it also benefits everything. And so if you have issues with any sort of fungal problem, for example, powdery mildew, and it overwinters in your area. So you need to do a little bit of research there to see if it overwinters in your area. If it does, you want to remove those leaves, hot compost them whenever possible, and or turn them into leaf mold, which is a guaranteed hot compost, because you're going to bag it, put a little bit of moisture in it, and then leave it in the garbage bags against the house for probably the entire summer. Next year, when you go to open them up, it's going to be like a peat moss replacement for potting soil. It'll, it'll look nothing like leaves and it won't have the disease. So number two is carbon, aka organic material. When we look at a soil from an agricultural perspective, we are looking for somewhere between 5 to 10% by volume being organic material. This means it is a healthy soil. And leaves, of course, are a great source of organic material, a great source of carbon. One study found that yards that left their leaves just in place to disintegrate and do nothing with had soil with 32% higher levels of organic material because they just let them decay in place. The way that this works is the earthworms kind of turn it under, microbes and other macrofauna turn it under, your soil you know, naturally erodes and moves around and eventually it kind of gets absorbed into the soil portion or lower into that leaf litter layer at the interface of your soil and the top of what would be your mulch. This will increase your cation exchange capacity, moisture holding capacity. It will help rectify heavy clay soils that are compacted or heavily aggregated in a bad way. It will help sandy soils retain more moisture, retain more nutrients, make it a lot healthier, more fertile soil. There's The benefits are truly endless. However, science also found some interesting stuff about leaves on soil. Now, this doesn't so much apply to us gardeners, maybe, unless you're very conscious of your ecological footprint. But the shredded leaves, so the ones that have been pounded into oblivion and look like little pieces of confetti, well, those can cause hot spots. And those hot spots are actually hot spots of nitrous oxide. And if you did not know, nitrous oxide is about 300 times more toxic to the environment than CO2. So fun fact that leaves do that. On an agricultural scale, maybe it matters because you maybe get dinged for uh, carbon points, but in a world of gardeners, I don't, who cares? Okay, so let's get back to that whole leaf mold fungal thing. So yes, we have the microbe magnet in the sense that it attracts a lot more fungal activity, a lot more bacterial activity, a lot of more macro fauna insect activity. But we also have the just straight fungal side of things. So if you did not know, lignin and cellulose, two structural components of plant leaves, which is really high, usually in tree leaves, can only be fully digested by fungal hyphae or fungal activity. So when you go to like walk across leaves and it crunches, that is literally, you're, you're actively crunching 
lignin and cellulose. That's what gives it that crunch. And because the source of lignin and cellulose is so high, it tends to be a particularly good magnet for the fungal portion of stuff. That's why leaf mold is so possible. Because when we bag up the leaves in a garbage bag with some moisture, it is the perfect environment for fungi to inhabitate. What it will do is it'll break it down and it, you end up with a, a soil or organic material that has a five times higher hold, water holding capacity than regular soil. It's quite the miracle product. The fact that it hasn't been marketed and sold yet is shocking to me. With that being said, if you see fungi popping up in an area that you've mulched with leaves, in your compost pile, maybe in your browns pile, don't panic. Don't eat them, obviously, but don't panic. It's very rarely going to be a bad thing. It very likely is just the fruiting body of the fungus doing its thing due to the fact that it is literally the best food source for them. Okay, so before we hit pseudoscience corner, let's do some myth busting, starting off with leaves taking away nitrogen from the soil. Okay, so yes, this is 110% true, but here's the thing. It only interferes with the nitrogen at the interface in which it touches the soil. So if you decide to take soil, put leaves on top, and then rototill said leaves into the soil, anywhere where there's an interface between the leaves and the soil, you will have a draw of nitrogen from the microbes into the decomposition process, causing a nitrogen carbon destabilization, if you will. So yes, that is very real. However, this rule applies not just to leaves. It applies to cured compost. Anything organic will cause this. You know, the roots rotting in the ground right now is another example of something that would do this. So one of the ways to counter this or to ensure it doesn't happen in excess would be to use it as a mulch on the surface. And in this case, it's a good thing. The reason why it's a good thing actually comes down to the fact that lack of nitrogen means poor environments for weed seeds. So if you don't have a perennial plant that is germinated via seed, or if you don't necessarily have a space that's seed for seed starting, the utilization of leaves as a mulch in a perennial bed or in or bed where you intend to transplant can actually help suppress weed development because it's going to starve said weed seedlings from that nitrogen, which is exactly what we want. Now, a thick enough layer it can penetrate to around, the effects of this can penetrate to around one to two inches, which generally is substantial enough to kind of counteract some issues. So with all that being said, yes, it does draw nitrogen, but if utilized properly, it's not necessarily a bad thing. And if you have already rototilled leaves in or grass clippings or anything like that organic, I would encourage you to just use a nitrogen fertilizer, so urea, for example, something really high in nitrogen to kind of water that soil to help boost the speed in which decomposition takes place to hopefully get it to get that carbon nitrogen ratio back up to snuff quicker. Okay, number two is oak leaves and, and or juggalone. So let's talk about juggalone first off. Juggalone is something that is seen in several different tree leaves. And here's the thing, juggalone is toxic to plants, but the key here is in dose. So if you have those leaves mixed with another set of leaves, particularly if it's 50-50 or 25% juggalone leaves with 75% regular leaves, or if it's like juggalone leaves mixed with your regular compost, the likelihood of that being high enough in toxicity to cause any issues, pretty darn low. So what that means is that you can do a little bioassays test, if you will, which simply means taking what you believe to be the toxic substance. You can do this just with regular compost if you want to, regular soil if you want to. Put in 10 pea seeds and 10 cord seeds. All you want to see is how much, how many of the pea seeds germinate, how many of the corn seeds germinate. If both of them seem to germinate fine, there's no issues. If you notice one, the broad leaf, like peas, for example, not germinating, then it's a sign of some pesticide issues and vice versa with the corn. If they both indicate signs of poor germination, you do have some allelopathic properties from that juggalone, which means that that compost or that leaf material is too high in that product. And so you don't want to apply it to the garden. But a bioassays test can help you curb pretty much all of these issues pretty easily. Okay, so oak leaves and pine needles 
are ones that people claim to cause acidity in the soil. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but changing the acidity in your soil is next to impossible. It's very, very difficult. I've done a whole video on this and how it takes years to actually do. Now, the University of Michigan did some trials with pine needles and oak leaves to see if they could shift the balance in the pH of the soil. They ran this study for something stupid like seven years, and the soil pH stayed completely the same the entire time, meaning it doesn't actually cause problems. The issue or the reason why we don't see things growing under pine trees and oak leaves has nothing to do with acidity. It has to do with something completely different and can be very easily rectified. I need to do a whole video on that, I think, because I know so many people with this issue, but it is totally fixable. And in this case is not due to the acidity of these leaves, meaning if we were to scoop them up and put them as a mulch or to kind of utilize them in the compost, there's no problems. It's not going to cause any issues whatsoever. So if you have leaves, please utilize them, whether you're bagging them up inside of pumpkin bags and then storing them for the rest of the year to make some leaf mold. If you're utilizing them as a mulch, maybe you're utilizing them in your compost, wherever it may be, don't throw them out. Beg your neighbors for their leaves because there's nothing but good things. There's very rarely any issues unless, of course, you have some sort of fungal issue or bacterial issue you're trying to counteract. Then, of course, remove and dispose of those ones. But otherwise, you're in the clear. It's a miracle product, truly. And again, like I said, I am shocked that they don't sell it to people the same way that we sell garden straw to people for way too much money, given what it is. Geek Crew, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!